request, we have reviewed workload, overload, and uh, clarification of release time. The topics of this uh, report will be the workload overload, analysis by school, what's the workload and overload by school, uh, a possible solution uh, as we move forward with an approval uh, process for additional overload. Uh, we will re we'll review non-instructional time and release time, uh, re recounting that release time is either specific to faculty agreement or it's just it is non-instructional time requested by the full-time uh, faculty. Again, we have an online approval with a draft document for you. Clarification of release time requires that deans uh, do that clarification. It doesn't seem to be easily accessible from Banner. And last, we have faculty agreement expert excerpts uh, for your review. Let's begin. Okay, the workload uh, of uh, full-time faculty. We have a chart here that shows the uh, overload, uh, this is overload, a faculty by school and you'll note that arts and science has 11 overload courses business has 85 and education has 10 overload courses given to full-time faculty should be noted that full-time faculty are paid in excess of four thousand dollars for a three credit course I believe it's closer to 4500 during the academic year 2009-2010 uh, that compares to 2500 for a three credit course for an adjunct this is may be considered an additional expense. Please note that some faculty have taught 20 and over courses, uh, overload courses, which could mean that they have earned, in addition to their salary, an additional $60,000. Again, this is conservative estimates. Um, please note that the major portion of these uh, overload seem to be going to the faculty of 80% of it, I should say, is going to the School of Business, which means that the college has paid additional fa uh, faculty an additional $340,000 conservatively for overload courses just in the business department alone. Uh, this might be an item for concern. With that in mind, uh, and the, use, the current use of online approval, looking forward it might be wise to consider this an additional expense overload by full-time faculty being more expensive and so we put together a uh, draft copy of a request for overload uh, with the, the uh, uh, chief financial officer signing off for budgetary reasons. Uh, Non-instructional time. That's basically release time as specified in the contract uh, for things like FDCC or department chair and then the faculty can also request release time for other items uh, again in the contract um, and we're going to take a look at that we, uh, below. The way it works is that the faculty requests from the FDCC there's a three-page uh, three form uh, here's the form for you, we'll have a copy uh, and the topic for release time for professional activities could be research, scholarship, artistic expression, etc. Uh, this is typically goes from the FDCC uh, through the Dean to the CAO. Once again, it might be something that if it's an additional expense, we consider a form for non-instructional time. Uh, clarification of release time. It's difficult to find in Banner release time differentiated between uh, non-instructional time requested and uh, for uh, uh, items noted directly in the faculty agreement. It is our thought that we could request uh, clarification from the Dean and differentiate those two. We put together, a, we can put together a packet. Uh, the form going out to them would have a list of all courses and in addition a spreadsheet showing how many courses were taught by each faculty member um, this is actually by credit, uh, and then lower an additional response form where the faculty would be asked to give the, uh, the dean would be asked to clarify the nature of that release time. Was it due to specific uh, faculty agreement or was it due to additional services to the college? Here are faculty agreement excerpts. Thank you.